Hi guys, welcome to today's QGIS tutorial lesson 29. In this video, we will learn adding geotag photos in QGIS. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so so that you can get a notification when I upload my next lesson. If you're new to my channel, you can follow all my previous lessons and useful GIS tips from the links in the description below. Let's get started. So, a geotag photograph is a photograph which is associated with a geographic position by geotagging. Usually this is done by assigning at least latitude and longitude to the image and optionally altitude, compass bearing and other fields may also be included. These photos can be taken during field work using a GPS enabled camera, phone or tablet. So let's now learn how these photos can be added to QGIS project as pop-ups. So we're going to use two methods. So let's go to QGIS and look at today's exercise. We'll open QGIS, then go to project, new project. So we have created a new blank project here. Then the first thing we do is we are going to just inspect the photos that we have. Before we start with the first method that we're going to be using, we'll inspect and look at the kind of photos that we have. So I'm going to open the photo location, which is on the desktop. GIS, uh, data. Then I have saved them as fieldwork photos. And you can see I have several field photos here. There's aloe vera ants, anthills, beehives, bridges, cactuses, hearts. This, this can be actually any kind of uh, field work that you have done. So for you to be able to know if these are uh, geotagged photos, you need to look at the properties of the, of the photos. So I'll just select any of the images, like for example, the anthill. Then I'll go and right click and so look at the properties of this uh, image. So I'm going to go to details because I want to look at the details of this photo then there are very very many details i just scroll down and you can see the kind of camera that i took with it was from a tablet and then when you go down the most important thing that we are looking for is the gps and you can see the end of the gps we have the latitude and the longitude and the altitude so these are the uh, very very useful information that are going to be needing in this exercise uh, so this is actually a geotagged photo. You might have other photos that don't actually have any coordinates and I think we actually uh, tackled that in another app, another exercise. You can just uh, look at the links in the description below and be able to follow that lesson. So let's go back to QGIS now that we know that our photos are geotagged. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install a plugin for this exercise. So I'm going to go to plugins manage and install plugins and then i'll go to all then i'll look for a plugin called import photos and i can see i have it here so this tool can be used to import your tagged photos that is very very important for us so i'm going to click on install and i'm going to let it install And you can see install successful and you can see there's some actually two tabs that have been added into our toolbar one is the import photo and the other one is click photo so this is now actually the tabs that we're going to be using to import our photos if you don't find these in your toolbar here you can just right click right click and make sure that you activate it or you can just come to the plugin tab and you will see a new tab here called import photos and then you can just select the import photos so that's how you can actually now access it now we want to import the photos that we actually have uh, had taken from the field into our QGIS project so I'm going to just click on this tab here import photos then I'm going to input the folder location I'm going to select the folder location by browsing for it it is in the desktop GIS data 
and uh, it is field photos you can see field work photos here so i'm going to select the field work photos click on select folder so i've selected the folder the output file location i'm going to browse and i'm going to save it as uh, either an esri shape file a geojson geo package csv map info tab and all that so you can actually save it in this this actually this file format i like using the geo package you can even save it as an esri shape file so i'm going to save it as a geo package then i'm going to just save it within the same same folder the js folder data uh field photos i'm going to save it here so i'm going to call it for this case i'm just going to say it's demo these are demo demo pictures for our project so i'm just going to say save a demo geo package then um you can actually load styles if you have them it's up to you to decide then i can say okay to load my photos and it will tell me import complete details 15 photos added without error if the, if we actually had errors they could appear here but then everything is okay i'm going to click on okay and it has actually loaded some uh, photos here and uh, the first thing i can do is i can just double click on any of these photos to like, just look at what information they have so i just, can just double click on it and you can see the photo appears so i'm just going to this is like just another this is just a another layer that when you open the attribute table you will just find all the information about uh, the photos that you have taken so what, what i want to do is i want to do a little bit of styling so i'm going to go to properties then i'm going to just change the symbol i don't like this symbol so much so i'm just going to select a simple symbol and then i'm going to increase the size of the symbol maybe a black uh, maybe i change the color of the symbol to maybe say light green like that then apply okay and now i've changed the symbols then the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to actually name uh, make sure that i label the my symbols so properties label single labels and i'm going to label them with the name column which is this so i'm going to just change the text to maybe say still a darker shade of green and i'm also going to increase the size a bit and make draw a buffer a white buffer the background and then the placement i'm going to just make sure it's offset from point maybe say here and uh, i'll put it one x one degree and one degree for y then i click on apply okay and you can now see we have actually labeled our photos very nicely here as points so the next thing i want to do is i can even introduce a base map i can go uh, to the hcmgs plugin and introduce a base map maybe say a satellite image select a satellite image and then i bring the satellite image below the points so that i can now zoom in and just select any point and look at what kind of information it has like for example there's a stream here you can see there's a stream here when i click on this it, it actually shows you the image of that stream and the time i even took it so that is one way of actually loading these photos into uh, qgis so let's go to the next method that doesn't actually require a plugin to load into QGIS. So the next method that you can use uh, to import the JTAG photos into QGIS is very simple. First of all, we are going to uninstall the plugin that we had actually installed. That is the photos import photos plugin. So I'm going to select the import photos plugin, and then I'm going to uninstall the plugin. So the plugin has been uninstalled. You can see when I go to plugins, it's no longer available here. And also 
no longer available in the toolbar. So the next thing you're going to do is we are now going to look at the second method of now bringing in the geotag photos without actually necessarily having a plugin. So for us to achieve this, we go to the processing toolbox and open the processing toolbox here. Then we are going to select vector creation. When you select vector creation, you will see there is several several tabs within there is one tab called import geotagged photos. So I need to select this import geotagged photos by double clicking. And then we're going to do the same, same thing. We're going to input the folder that has the photos. So I'm going to select the folder that has the photos, which is in the desktop, GIS data, uh, field photos, field work photos. So I'm going to select that folder. Then it gives you uh, the saving option, which is going to be, I'm going to select this uh, drop down here and I'm going to save it to a file. Then I can change, actually by it has more files here that you can actually save it with, but I like using the job package layer. So I'm going to save it as a job package layer. Then I'm going to save it still in the same, same folder, JS folder, data, field work. And I already have a demo job package layer that we actually used in the first example. So I'm going to save it as demo two so that you have the two job package layers and then you see the difference so i'm going to click on save then i'm just going to click on on run and it pretty much takes very very few seconds to run and uh, the, the 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 result has actually been loaded into the into qgis that i'm going to click on close and you can see now i have a second demo two here i can uncheck the demo one you see it still has the same same information and i open the attribute table i have even a, a much leaner uh, attribute table actually it doesn't have so many information like the previous one where we are using the where we were actually using the the plugin you can see it actually omitted so many other fields like the camera make camera model and all that you can see in the demo two it has just the few information about this file and the most important uh, ones which are the altitude longitude and latitude timestamp when it was taken and also a very important one because you're going to be needed needing it the photo link so if you click on your second example which is the demo 2 you'll notice that the photos are not actually popping up as in the first case in the in the previous case where, where we use actually the demo one so you actually need to change some little bit of settings so that you can achieve that so for for us to do that you're going to go to demo 2 right click on it then go to properties then before you go to the properties first we'll actually check uh, attribute table to see which field has the photo links and you can see the photo links are in the uh, attribute called photos so we're going to use that so I'm going to say, uh, right click on the demo two, go to properties, then go to attribute forms. Then I'm going to select now the photos and you can see the photos are just, the widget type is text edit. So I'm going to change it to an attachment. And then I'm going to scroll down in this small box here, just below the attachment where I'm going to put in the path of the, the photos. I'm going to select the default path for the photos so i'm going to go to data uh js data then i'm going to go to field photos and that is the path so i'm going to select that as my path then i'm going to scroll down a bit and then i'm going to say i want them to be stored relative to path i'm going to check that then i'm going to select scroll still scroll down and then and then i'm going to still scroll down again then I'm going to say the type is an image. Then the width, I'll say auto and the height auto. And then I'll click on apply, okay. Then I'll go back now to the same, same uh, point. Select it and you can see a very small, tiny image appears here with the information. So I need to make this, uh, this uh, photo a bit bigger. 
So for me to make it a bit bigger, I'll just go back to my 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 layer. Right click, go to properties. Then I'm going to go to the same, which is the photos. I've actually put in a lot of information here as an attachment relative to path. Then I'll go here down where they say width, which is auto. I'm going to put it put in some figures instead of be, making it auto. I'll say maybe 500 pixels by 500. Then I'm going to click on apply. Okay, so I've actually made them bigger. So when I click on it again right now, you can see now the image is now much bigger. And it has all that information that you actually need. So I can go to another point. Like maybe say this one here to ascertain what it is. It's an anthill. I can go to another point here. And you can see a very, very nice structure here. That you took in your field in your field work so that is how you actually import geotagged photos into qgis if you found this video useful and you want to learn more on qgis subscribe to my channel don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Remember, this was the first series of Up and Running in QGIS. So don't forget to join us in the second series, which starts in a week's time on Up and Running in QGIS Series 2. See you in my next video.